Hello YouTube. I'm going to be talking about some 1911s, specifically the Dan Wesson Point Man 9 or PM9 9mm 1911. Over the last year I've had a number of questions about these guns and uh, in particular one of my uh, YouTube subscribers uh, Champer Champer Slimmer Than None has been asking me a number of questions and he's been on the fence about buying one and he asked me if I'd be willing to do a little review video I'm not much of a uh, reviewer or reviewer enthusiast but I figured what the heck we'll, uh, we'll give this a try so obviously I have a number of 1911s on the table here to talk about uh, but before I get started I figured I'd uh, start by saying who I am. Uh, I started shooting pistols in 2011 and found USPSA in 2013 and since then I have been uh, competing heavily in the 1911 single stack division. Uh, I consider myself a 1911 enthusiast. Uh, if you think this is a number of 1911s on the table, I have many more in the safe. <laughs> um, I'm also what I would call an amateur gunsmith. Uh, I have no uh, real formal training per se, but I've done a lot of reading on the subject uh, and I've done a lot of trial and error and um, learned a lot over the years and do a lot of my own work, uh, although there are certainly situations where I leave the work to the experts. So, uh, in any event, the first thing I want to talk about is the difference between factory, semi-custom, and full custom 1911s. Um, what we're talking about here today is what I feel is the best factory made 1911 that you can buy. Uh, and again, that's just my opinion. Uh, I think Dan Wesson really has an amazing thing going. Uh, and I will say that I am not in any way, shape, or form affiliated with them or sponsored by them. I have no obligations to them. I just think they make a really fine product. Um, however, if they wanted to uh, throw some sponsorship my way, I'd certainly welcome it. <laughs> um, but there are three main categories of 1911. Uh, the first is going to be your factory 1911s. That's your major manufacturers. Um, some obvious names would be Kimber, um, Springfield Armory, of course, you can't leave those guys out, uh, SIG, uh, you name it. Just about every major firearm company out there, Smith & Wesson, um, whoever, everybody makes a 1911. Uh, and they have all kinds of different tiers starting all the way down with your Philippine made guns like the Rock Island Armories and Citadel um, all the way up to uh, the top shelf stuff which I believe Dan Wesson is the top shelf in factory guns. Um, I have here on the table my first 1911. I will never get rid of this gun. This is a Kimber TLE 2 and 45 and uh, this is the gun that uh, basically I learned it all on. Uh, this gun, I know there's a lot of Kimber haters out there but um, I have over 60,000 rounds on this gun and it's still going strong and I've retired it from competition, but I still do shoot it every now and again, and I've got a really great 22 conversion kit to go with it. Um, so, uh, you know, because it's my first love and because it's still totally useful, uh, I'm going to hang on to it. Now, I will say that over the years, it has been overhauled like crazy. There's not a whole lot of um, stock Kimber left in this gun. Um, it is still an original Kimber rear sight. Uh, slide frame, the uh, full length guide rod and barrel, um, the stock trigger still in it, bushing still in it, but overall the uh, fire control group has been completely changed out. I think right now it's, it's riding all Wilson Combat uh, fire control parts. Um, it's got a Dawson Ipsic Magwell and mainspring housing, aluminum, um, but 
uh, in general, uh, this gun came with mostly MIM parts or metal injection molded parts. And over time, uh, getting that much wear and abuse, uh, those parts started to break down. And so I started to experience, uh, experiment heavily with um, different tool steel parts and different manufacturers. And I was learning how to cut sears and you know do all that kind of jazz and so um uh you know over the years this thing has been modified but overall the 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 primary parts uh you know are still running great no no main issues and i trust this gun to run 100 percent. so it's been a fantastic gun so that's an example of i guess you'd call this a mid-tier um factory gun i think i bought this uh, somewhere around, uh, I don't know, $800, something like that. Um, you know, I think uh, 1911s probably start in the $400 ballpark and go all the way up to uh, about the, I don't know, $1,800 ballpark in factory guns. Um, so there's uh, an example of a mid-tier factory gun. The next type of uh, 1911 uh, moving up from factory is semi-custom. Uh, examples of semi-custom, this is a Les Bear uh, in 45. Um, other well-known semi-custom builders would be Wilson Combat, uh, Ed Brown, Nighthawk. Um, these are the types of companies where you can either order a set model that they offer or you can contact them and you can order a gun uh, basically a la carte from their menu of parts uh, which is what i did with this gun um, i contacted them and uh, told them exactly what i wanted you know front and rear cocking serrations i wanted the top of the slide serrated um, you know i gave them uh, effectively a build and they produced it over a series of uh, months and then shipped it to my FFL. I picked it up and uh, shot the fire out of it. Now, uh, over time, a lot of those parts have started to break down, and I've you know done a number of modifications to this gun as well. Uh, this is the uh, the fire control group is all uh, EGW and cylinder and slide. Uh, it's got an STI trigger. It's got this big old Infinity uh, titanium magwell on it. Um, but uh, overall, it's still wearing most of its. Um, uh, original Les Bear parts and this thing uh, is guaranteed from Les Bear to shoot inch and a half groups at 50 yards and uh, believe me it does it. Uh, this is the most accurate uh, 1911 I own because it is so incredibly tightly built. The lockup on this <coughs> is very very tight. Um, the, uh, the bushing fit, the slide to frame fit, everything is super super tight. Um, and uh, uh, that translates downrange into some extreme accuracy. But uh, the downside is uh, it can be a little tight when you're trying to run it really fast uh, in competition. So, um, But uh, this is a perfect example of what a semi-custom gun is. In other words, um, a gun builder that hand fits all the parts, um, but essentially you choose uh, from a list of parts that they offer, they manufacture, okay? Which brings us to the third tier of 1911. Uh, and this is, a, uh, this is an Atlas Gunworks. Um, and that third tier is full custom. In other words, if you can dream it, they build it. Um, there's a number of manufacturers out there, Infinity, uh, SVI is very popular in the USPSA circuit. Um, Atlas Gunworks is a uh, up and comer. And um, this type of company, you contact them and you build it from the ground up. Tell them exactly what you want. You can specify parts, you can specify how you want things cut and so on. Uh, I mean, basically, if you can dream it, they can build it. Um, but of course, you know, it costs significant money. <laughs> Um, this gun in particular, you can see it has um, uh, really wide um, cocking serrations. Uh, it has a tri-topped slide, so the slide weight is ridiculously light. 
um, I had them serrate the top of it. Um, the trigger guard, I don't know if you can see that, the trigger guard is undercut extremely and the uh, beaver tail is also very, very high cut resulting in a superior high grip on the gun. You can get very, very high on this gun. Um, additionally, it's got a, uh, a flat face trigger. Uh, sorry if I'm not centering this in the camera uh, too well, but um, basically the sky's the limit. Uh, you know, I was able to specify, you know, basically every single part going into this gun. I have one in 9mm and one in uh, 45 that are identical. And uh, uh, while it's not as accurate as the, uh, the Les Bear is, this thing still is uh, accurate as can be. It's super tight. Um, you know, the uh, slide weight is, uh, is so light, it cycles very well. And um, uh, basically, um, uh, they built exactly what I asked for. You know, I sent them a drawing. I sent them photographs of the different things uh, that I liked in slide cuts and so on. And, uh, and they made it. Uh, to spec. So over the years, you know, playing around with all these different guns from uh, factory to semi-custom to full custom, I've kind of figured out all of the things that I really look for in a quality 1911. And that brings us to the Dan Wessons. Um, I don't think that there's a Dan Wesson model offered that isn't quality. They really make a fantastic firearm. But in particular, um, as we're talking about USPSA competition, I think the Point Man series is on point. <laughs> See what I did there? Um, so uh, I bought uh, a PM9, um, I guess it was about a year and a half ago, and I was just absolutely blown away with it. I liked it so much that I bought a second one and um, uh, for this year, 2017, these were my uh, primary match guns uh, for the year. Um, this one in particular was my primary match gun. This was my practice and backup gun. And um, they're really fantastic, and I'd love to tell you why. So, getting right down into it. Um, there are no MIM parts in the Dan Wesson guns. They are tool steel parts. It's a forged stainless frame, forged slide. Um, I'm sure that there is hand fitting involved in these, but in order to keep it at you know a factory uh, price point and produce them at the the numbers that they do, uh, I'm sure that they you know keep that as minimum as possible. Um, but the overall fit and finish of these guns is uh, really pretty unbelievable. Um, I liked these 9mm so much that um, uh, I looked at their 45s and I didn't see a particular model of 45 that they offered that had all of the same features of the PM9 that I loved. And so I actually contacted them and I uh, spoke with Keith uh, in their custom department and I told him I'd like a 45 built exactly like a PM9 with all the same features and uh, he put it together for me and uh, that's actually what you see here. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is uh, I have not made any modifications to this gun. In fact, I have not even fired it yet. Um, and so I think uh, that this is going to be um, representative of what you can expect out of the box uh, from a Point Man series. About the only thing different on this gun is uh, they put uh, some VZ grips that I requested specifically. Uh, other than that, this is absolutely bone stock from Dan Wesson. And uh, here's what you get with the, uh, the Point Man 9, and in this case, my custom PM45, uh, built just like it. Um, so when I'm looking at a 1911, right off the bat, it has to have front and rear cocking serrations. Um, if it does not have front cocking serrations, I just pass it right up. I don't even take a, a second look at it. Yes, I realize that you can have them uh, cut into your slide later, but you know I don't want to mess with all that. I want, I want that feature there. Um, additionally, front strap checkering. And I've seen a number of uh, different ways to do this, um, but uh, this is really outstanding. I don't know how... Uh, 
well that will focus in there but this is 25 lines per inch front strap checkering and it is outstanding the finish on the checkering is great the grip is fantastic and they've duplicated that same 25 lines per inch checkering on the main spring housing uh, which is a total bonus to me um, it actually looks you know a little raised off of the frame in fact i don't know if you can see it here but um, there's a section here where it kind of bumps up and again they have a uh, they have a slight undercut on their trigger guard uh, which is a total bonus as well uh, most custom or uh, factory gun guns won't have that but the check ring is a little raised and i really like that uh, for example the uh, the atlas gun on the other hand um, they um, i don't know if i can get a good picture of that um, but they cut it right into the existing frame, so it's actually reduced uh, just a little bit. That's not a problem by any means, um, but just something that I, I notice. Uh, and with the, uh, the Les Bear, they actually hand, Les Bear hand files there. As you can see, I've, I've got a little bit of finger uh, stuff on there. But um, again, they just cut it right into the existing frame, whereas the, uh, the Dan Wessons, you know, again, have uh, kind of a, an added, you know, bump out or whatever where that uh, checkering takes place. And I, I love it. It's super comfortable. Uh, gives a really fantastic grip. I, you know, so front strap checkering is, uh, is definitely uh, another one of those things that I look for uh, in all 1911s. Um, adjustable rear sight stock. That's my preference. Uh, the uh, the Point Man series has uh, what is likely a uh, a Ken site. I think it, just about everybody goes with Ken site, and then they rebrand them. But I like that adjustable site cut to be done, so I don't have to worry about it later. Uh, that's not totally necessary. My my Kimber, you know, had a a, a fixed rear, and I've had several others with fixed rear, and they were great. But um, when I'm messing around with um, load development. Um, you know, hand loading uh, different rounds, different powder charges. Um, I don't know where it's going to impact at various different distances. So I love the ability to um, to be able to adjust that, and I want it to be a quality sight that's going to hold up over time. And uh, and these have been fantastic uh, so far. Um, it does come stock with a fiber optic front sight. Total bonus. Um, most of the time I change out the uh, front sight anyway uh, because I like a thinner front sight than what comes on uh, on most 1911s. Um, this one, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's very low and um, I'd say it's uh, about a 125 wide, uh, which is pretty typical. Uh, my Kimber actually is running a, um, a 125 wide um, Dawson sight. Uh, just to match that, you know, huge 135 rear notch on there. But, um, but all my other guns, including my PM9s, I actually um, replaced the front sight with a. Um, uh, this is a 110 wide. That's my preference. Most guys are running 100s, um, but I put my own Dawson sights on there, and I mean that's pretty much de facto. Any any competitive shooter has a sight that they like, and they're going to put it on all their guns. And um, I actually have a. Uh, Dawson site to replace uh, this one um, not too distant future but uh, I didn't want to do that just yet because again I want you to see you know what this gun looks like uh, coming out of the box um, I talked briefly about the undercut trigger guard love that it's not nearly as extreme as uh, say the uh, the undercut that's on my uh, my Atlas custom gun um, but after running uh, the Kimber for a while, that does not have an undercut really at all, um, and uh, this Les Bear most definitely has no undercut whatsoever. I mean, that is as straight as can be. Um, I developed a bit of a uh, nasty callus around here, and you know, not that that's really a problem, but you know, that uh, that undercut certainly makes it more comfortable. Uh, but more importantly, uh, you get a very high purchase on the gun and what are we after here we're always after getting our hand up as high as possible so that we can mitigate that recoil uh, so the uh, undercut trigger guard 
totally awesome, totally stock with the Dan Wesson Point Man series. Love it. Um, added bonus with the uh, the Point Man 9, and then again, uh, what I had done to the 45 is the uh, what they call the Clark style rib on top. I do love having uh, serrations, but they've kind of taken it one step further where they've actually relieved uh, some material here on the slide, um, which uh, makes this kind of pop out. Um, as Nut and Fancy would say, it's second kind of cool. I mean, I just think it looks sexy as hell, but um, functionally it uh, reduces glare um, in your sight picture. And uh, for me, that's you know a pretty big deal. So. Um, you know, with my custom guns, uh, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. Um, you know, I had the uh, serrations cut right into the top, and of course this was tri-topped. Um, the uh, Les Bear, you know, has the serrations uh, cut right into the top. No additional relief. Um, so as a result, the slide on the Les Bear is actually a little heavier than uh, on the, uh, the PM9s. Um, so uh, the Clark style rib, total bonus. It is super sexy and uh, very functional for reducing glare. Uh, I just think it looks, looks sharp as hell. And uh, I'm really glad that that's a feature. And that's one of the things that was missing, uh, for example, on their uh, PM745. Uh, the PM745 didn't have the front strap checkering, didn't have the Clark uh, rib up top, uh, and a few other things, and so uh, that's why I engaged them to make me a, uh, a semi-custom version. All right, what else we got? Um, the PM9 comes with a ramped match barrel. I mean, you're pretty much not going to find any 9mm 1911 that does not have a, uh, a ramped barrel. Um, but uh, when they say it's a match barrel, they are... Uh, not kidding i don't know if i can get any good light down in there probably not but effectively what that means is the ramp is part of the barrel rather than um like a traditional 45 1911 the ramp is built into the frame and um, uh, the ramp uh, came uh, super polished um, no uh, edges or anything hanging out. Uh, it was really fantastic from the get-go, and the lockup is uh, is really awesome. Um, this my first Point Man Nine. This is a 2015 model. The uh, the barrel is just flat cut up front. My more recent one, which happens to be a uh, 2017 model, they did a kind of a back bevel cut on it. I don't know if you can see that too well, but um, I don't think that makes a whole lot of difference, but um, you know, it certainly looks awesome. And uh, you know, if we don't look awesome, then why are we even doing this, right? <laughs> um, I talked a little bit about the, uh, the checkered mainspring housing. Uh, you know, again, for me, grip, you know, is paramount and uh, they did a fantastic job on the mainspring housing. My first one um, has a little bit less. I would want to say this is 20 lines per inch uh, on the 2015 model, but um, on the newer ones, they did move up to a, um, a much nicer uh, 25 lines per inch. And uh, most people won't notice the difference between that, but I do because I'm a huge nerd. But um, uh, anyway, the 25 lines per inch checkering is outstanding. The, uh, whoops, sorry about that, guys. Not exactly a pro here. I'm using a pretty crappy camera and just a couple of lamps, so uh, I apologize for any of that weirdness. Um, the uh, grip safety is uh, what I would call outstanding. So a number of grip safeties, depending on how they're cut, you know, will determine really how high you can get the webbing of your hand uh, on the pistol. And uh, this one is uh, really fantastic. It's, it's not nearly as high uh, as the Atlas gun. If you look at that, that Atlas is really cut very, very high. I mean, I can get super, super high on this gun. Um, but if we compare it to um, my Les Bear, the Les Bear has a very fat, I hope you can see that. It's a very fat beaver tail. 
and it does kind of come down a little bit. Um, additionally, the Kimber, I would say, is uh, relatively flat, and their uh, safety doesn't have the what we call a memory button there. It's just sort of a flat surface. So while you get a decent grip, uh, you definitely don't get as high. So the uh, the beaver tail on here is great when it's uh, uh, in position uh, combined with the undercut trigger, trigger guard uh, I, like I, I am wanting for nothing with this grip you know I've got superior checkering I've got undercut trigger guard I've got a high beaver tail it's really fantastic of course on my match guns I lock the uh, the grip safety down uh, you know I know there's a whole bunch of people probably groaning out there right now but you know, I'm not into uh, defensive shooting with any of these pistols. I have different uh, guns for that. But um, for competition, I lock that down. And then, you know, when I go to grab for it, I get a perfect high competition grip every single time. And it's very comfortable and fantastic. All right. So uh, another thing that I love comes stock on the PM9 is a one-piece full-length guide rod. You know, there's a lot of 1911 traditionalists that uh, that don't care for that very much because it does, uh, you know, ultimately require the use of tools to uh, to take it apart, a bushing wrench. But I love it. Um, I love that it's a one piece rather than one of the threaded ones, kind of like what the my Kimber came with. And actually, my Les Bear, I had to specifically request the full length guide rod, and they they grumbled at me, and they ended up giving me a a pretty crappy two piece one, which I ultimately replaced with a a quality one piece steel part. But um, why do I like that? Well, you know, it prevents uh, the possibility of spring binding, but uh, further it uh, gives a little weight out front, um, which uh, does help balance the pistol and, and mitigate the recoil. And uh, I just love it. And uh, when I get that stock and fit with a really nice bushing, um, it is really hard to, uh, hard to beat. Now, I, won't, I will tell you, if you've never seen it before, uh, Dawson Precision um, makes what they call the toolless guide rod. This uh, Atlas gun is actually wearing one, and there's actually a little tab on the guide rod that you depress. And what you do is uh, push this up and then release the slide, and it actually captures uh, the, uh, the spring in one piece. Um, making it really easy to take apart and requires no tools and then when you put it back together it's you know basically the reverse and it's super easy to do i'm not going to take this completely apart uh for this video but um if you're interested in that kind of thing it's pretty cool um uh, but the one piece guide rod that comes on the pms uh is a fantastic i have no interest in changing it there's really no need it's fit right uh the weight is fantastic and you know i have pushing wrenches all over the place so uh you know if it ain't broke don't fix it so uh the thumb safety is outstanding you know one of the things that uh that i love uh on all of my competition guns is a nice wide lever i call it the gas pedal um, basically, when I get my grip on the gun, my, gun, my, uh, my thumb is riding that thumb safety nice and high, and I want a nice, comfortable ledge. Now, I will say that over the years, I have uh, grown to love a particular thumb safety from Wilson Combat, and so all of my guns, with the exception of this one, which I haven't changed yet, are actually riding a... Um, a Wilson Combat that's very similar to the one that comes stock, but it just happens to be the one that I prefer. And so I have it on both of my Point Man 9s. I have it on my Atlas Full Custom Gun. It's riding on my uh, Les Bear. And I even have one on my on my Kimber here. I just, this particular thumb safety is, is it for me. But the one that came with the Point Man is fantastic. If you uh, are not picky about that kind of thing like I am, uh, there's really no need to change this part. It's a tool steel quality part. It looks fantastic. The width of it is just perfect. Uh, it just, um, uh, I like the way that this one uh, hits my thumb a little bit better. It's just a little more comfortable for me. That's the only reason I changed it. Uh, no other reason this one, you know, functions absolutely perfectly. The, uh, the engagement is perfect right out of the box. It's not too tight, not too loose. I just, just love it. Um, 
additional controls that uh, I think are paramount on this gun. Uh, the PMs come with a uh, extended, um, what I like to call a shelved um, slide release. I don't know if you can see that there, but the the slide release is right here. It's got this nice wide shelf on it. Now again, a lot of guys don't like that because when you get your your thumb out there, some guys will ride it and they don't like it. But for me, I absolutely love that um, because if I am in the middle of a slide lock load and I go and throw a mag in there, it doesn't take a whole lot to, uh, to hit that uh, slide release and send it home. So uh, again, that's another uh, feature that was missing on the PM7. Um, they had just a traditional uh, slide release. Here's my Atlas gun with a more traditional, this is an EGW. Um, and I like this one fine, um, but I, uh, over the last year, have come to like the one that comes on the, uh, the PM uh, series so much that I actually had a local gunsmith uh, fit the exact same one on my Les Bear. Um, I unfortunately broke the uh, the Les Bear uh, slide release and rather than send it back to Les Bear, I just went ahead and got a Dan Wesson one and had it fit on there and it's great. Um, so I love that. Um, speaking of extended controls, um, this is something that Champer uh, specifically asked me about and that's the magazine release. Um, so a traditional 1911 has a pretty uh, slim, flat magazine release. Well, this one comes with a extended, well, I think they call it like a tactical uh, slide release, which is um, extended out, uh, I don't know, about uh, an eighth of an inch maybe. I, I'm not sure about that, but it's perfect. Um, I wouldn't change that and uh, uh, with the Techwell grips and VZ grips that I like to use. I always um, uh, get this little uh, thumb cut here so that I can get right on that without a problem. And uh, some people ask about the extended uh, magazine release with the extra buttons on them and things like that. And those are okay. I actually, uh, for the purpose of this video, I slapped one on my uh, Atlas gun. Here's an example with one that's got a little button screwed on it. Um, but the problem with those is sometimes when you are laying the gun flat on a table, and let's say I have to go and pick it up from the table, um, there is a chance that you could um, hit that mag release and inadvertently throw your mag out of the gun. And um, additionally, these things are threaded, and so you know you have to lock tight them on there. And uh, then you, once you do that, you can you know you have to fight like hell to get them off. And uh, um, if you don't lock tight it, you know, in the middle of a match or whatever, it'll come off on you and that just sucks. So in general, um, I stick to, you know, this, uh, extended standard, uh, uh, magazine release and, uh, it comes stock on the Point Man series. Fantastic, um, feature set from, from Dan Wesson. Uh, on my early version of the gun, I don't know if you can see that, but they, uh, had a serrated version of the magazine release. On the uh, newer ones, it is checkered. Um, I don't really have a preference uh, between the two. I hope you can you can see the checkering on there. Um, but given the choice, I'll take checkering every time. And so uh, when they sent me my uh, 45, it had the newer checkering and I uh, absolutely love that. Um, these do have a internal extractor, you know, traditional 1911 style. You know, some guys like the external, uh, but traditional 1911 guys do not. But um, the one that comes in here is fantastic. I had to do no adjustments whatsoever on either of my nine mils. Um, you know, anybody who's got a lot of experience with nine millimeter 1911s can tell you that um, uh, extractor tension on there is uh, one of the more paramount uh, things that needs to be correct in order for the gun to run and the uh, the extractor that uh, that Dan Wesson provides is uh, really tough steel and it's fantastic it's required no adjustments um, I should point out that um, both of these PM nines have at least 4,000 if not you know more rounds on them this year um, 
they uh, definitely got a lot of use and um, uh, I've seen basically no wear issues uh, to speak of and I've had you know next to nothing malfunctions the the minimal malfunctions I've experienced with these guns were ammo related had and magazine related had nothing to do with the gun um, I was running some crappy ammo at one point that had some you know uh, busted up range brass and I had one get stuck um, in the breech face but uh, you know that was purely bad ammo not the guns fault everything else was cool um, so um, again you know at a glance you know when I'm looking for a 1911 I want you know a really awesome grip and I get that with the checkering I get that with the um, undercut trigger guard the really great beaver tail the uh, the thumb safety is nice and wide and fantastic the extended controls are fantastic the adjustable sight is fantastic and uh, stock out of the box the fire control group is outstanding um, I don't know uh, I think Dan Wesson is now making their own parts I think at one point they were using some Dan Brown stuff and some other things but um, uh, these kind of look like cylinder and slide hammers and so on but as far as I know Dan Wesson is making their own stuff but uh, the hammer sear engagement uh, out of the box on all three of these guns was superb um, this gun is right around I don't know three and three quarters four pound trigger pull out of the box the uh, take up is uh, excellent the brake is super crisp the reset is extremely positive I just, you know, I can't say enough. I mean, I, I was super thrilled with all three of my guns out of the box. The triggers were fantastic. However, being a competition shooter, you know, of course, I want it to be a little lighter. Um, we always do. And so, uh, with my Point Man 9s, um, I pulled the fire control group apart and, um, you know, just cleaned and polished everything I mean they actually had a very high polish on uh, all of the parts when I uh, opened it up and I was generally happy with it um, but one thing that I did do was I replaced the actual trigger bow uh, with an STI uh, trigger um, well if this gun's so awesome Jarrett why would you do that well the difference in weight the of the actual trigger bow the STI is 0.1 ounces in weight and the stock trigger while it is fantastic on the Dan Wesson I do love this trigger um, this is 0.25 ounces in weight so by changing to a lighter weight trigger bow um, that requires less spring tension on the um, leaf spring in the back for reset so I can actually loosen that spring tension a little bit uh, resulting in still a fantastic reset and uh, uh, reduce the trigger weight uh, significantly just by changing that trigger bow um, otherwise if I could you know obtain the same weight you know without doing a whole lot I probably would uh, just keep running this trigger it's actually uh, pretty fantastic but rather than messing around uh, too much in there uh, simply swapping out the uh, the, the trigger um, and adjusting that spring uh, got me down to uh, what I like and what I like is two pounds on the nose as crisp, uh, crisp as can be uh, with a good uh, positive reset and uh, I got it and I didn't have to do anything else I just fit the different trigger bow in there, adjusted the spring, and rock and roll, man, they're good to go. Uh, I actually have the same setup on my Les Bear. I have an STI trigger uh, with cylinder slide components, and it's probably one of the best, uh, best triggers I've got on my guns. So, um, the fire control group, uh, it is running the original disconnector, the original sear, original hammer. Um, you know all of that is uh, fantastic didn't need to change anything other than again I changed just the trigger and adjusted the spring accordingly and I got the trigger weight uh, exactly the way I wanted it and um, uh, I, I've got like I said uh, several thousand rounds on each of these guns and I've been looking at the fire control parts I can't see anywhere or anything I mean the parts are just 
fantastic. Love them. Uh, so, uh, let's see. What else can I tell you about this? Um, the slide to frame fit, even after all of that, is super tight. I mean, there's really no wiggle in there at all. Although, um, as uh, Adam at Atlas Gunworks, uh, you know, likes to, to point out frequently, that's actually not really uh, that important. It doesn't contribute to accuracy downrange. What it uh, what does is the uh, the barrel uh, fit. You know, there should be if I push down here, there should be no movement here, and it should be nice and tight lock up with the bushing. And I have that right out of the box with the uh, the point mans. They're they're really fantastic uh, on that front. Um, so, uh, anyway, uh, when you get right down to it, when I'm looking for 1911 and I'm looking for the different features, you know, the checkering, the high cuts, you know, the extended controls, the, uh, the tool steel parts, you know, the superior fit and finish, uh, all of that, uh, uh, I was not finding a lot of guns on the market, you know, from the major manufacturers that, that had the feature set that I wanted. You know, anytime I had to buy a 1911 it just seemed like I was changing a lot of stuff you know this Kimber you know like I said I mean it's you know new mainspring housing all new fire control group you know just about everything on this gun I had to change even my semi custom less bear um, while they did a really fantastic job uh, in order to get what I wanted out of this gun I had to change a lot of parts on this gun the entire fire control group is new um, you know, obviously I put my own uh, ergonomic things like the thumb safety I talked about and the mainspring housing. I had to get a checkered one there. Um, uh, and so, you know, I, I've gotten to a point where I've, I want to find a gun where I don't have to change a whole lot. And, uh, and that's what I'm getting with the, uh, the point man. I think the feature set overall, uh, as it pertains to target shooting and uh, practical shooting, IDPA, USPSA, um, uh, steel challenge, whatever, uh, the feature set you get with this gun is really uh, fantastic out of the box. You basically, uh, for USPSA, you slap a magwell on the bottom of this and, uh, and go run and go race. Uh, and that, that's it. Um, and I just, I think that's, that's key. That's where they got something really fantastic, uh, going. Um, people are probably going to ask these are, uh, Techwell XT magwells from, uh, Techware USA. Absolutely love these. These happen to be, um, the newest edition, uh, with the nickel plating. And, uh, I've been in contact with Bob Novak over there, uh, as he was developing these and, uh, uh, I can't say en enough good things about them. Uh, in fact, I have uh, new tech wells to put on all of these uh, guns because I just, uh, you know, after trying a whole bunch, I've tried the Dawson Ice. Uh, this is the Dawson Ipsic. I've tried the, you know, super expensive Titanium Infinity. Um, you know, I tried, this is a, uh, the Techwell Ipsic SP, uh, which is a, a shorter magwell. Um, after trying all the different ones, uh, the uh, XT Techwell is uh, is where it's at. I really love it, and uh, like I say, I'm going to put it on all of these. Um, and I've already got um, G10 Techwell grips, uh, you know, to go uh, with all of them. And one of the things I love about the Techwell is I don't have to change the mainspring housing or anything. Uh, it's held on by the grips, and I can get. Um, uh, really great G10 textured grips with the thumb cut that I love and you just snap them on there It holds the uh, the magwell on there and and uh, my reloads, you know are super quick and uh, love that um, So uh, I didn't have to change a lot. I put the tech well on there I put the thumb safety that I like on there. I put the trigger uh, light trigger on there uh, to reduce the trigger pull weight and I put the Dawson front sight on it, and otherwise um, these guns are running stock, and um, I kicked ass with them this year. I um, got second place at uh, my state championship match. I won a uh, major match um, right at the end of the season, and um, uh, I couldn't be more happy with them. And I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing them, you know, how the uh, major 45 uh, works out in the spring. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about uh, uh, is magazines. Uh, your magazine selection uh, really does make a huge difference. 
Um, there's a couple of major manufacturers out there that uh, most people have heard of. That'd be uh, Wilson Combat, uh, would be your Chip McCormick. Um, one of my personal favorites is uh, Trip Research. Uh, they make the Cobra mags and the Cory uh, Trip mags. Um, and then um, Metal Form or Dawson Precision. Well, I started out uh, running uh, my Atlas gun and these guns with um, the, um, uh, the Trip Research uh, Cobra mags. And while they are absolutely my go-to for 45, I love the, uh, the Trip Research 45 mags. And I will run those likely with the uh, Dan Wesson. Um, I did get <coughs> a little bit of an issue with the 9mm in that um, it would feed one round. And as it did that, because a 9mm case is tapered, it would actually pull the round below it forward. And so the next time the gun cycled, um, sometimes it would uh, get a little hung up. And so um, I experimented a little bit uh, with the Dawson magazines. Here's an example of a Dawson. And one of the differences uh, there is they have this, uh, this little built-in uh, feed ramp, as it were. So the round actually hits that first, and then that helps it uh, uh, hit the ramp and, and go in. Um, and uh, those were great. The Dawson's uh, are really fantastic. I definitely suggest trying them. Uh, although I did run into a, a little bit of an issue with the Dawson's. Um, they're just a little long, and so they were bumping the, uh, the top of the slide and marking it up on the inside just a little bit. Um, but the bigger one was uh, from Slide Lock. If I used the slide release um, from Slide Lock, uh, occasionally it would, uh, the round would actually uh, you know, be so tight in here in the top that the slide would just and stop right on the round and I'd have to, you know, hit it from back uh, behind in order to get it to uh, cycle. Uh, it didn't happen all the time, but it happened enough that I, you know, wanted to try some other things. And with the PM9, I ultimately settled on the second generation Wilson Combat ETM magazines. Um, Overall, uh, Wilson makes really great products. Uh, these actually have the same uh, integrated ramp. It's got a metal follower. Um, uh, they're really fantastic. Of course, I put my own uh, Dawson Precision base pads on there uh, just to extend it to make it a little easier to get them uh, uh, in there with the, uh, the mag well. But um, uh, for me, the Wilson Combat mags uh, run flawless in these guns. I have zero issues with those. I still have a whole ton of Dawson Precision mags and I use them in practice. They're also great. A buddy of mine uh, that I recommended a PM9, uh, he went right out and bought it and uh, he bought some of the new Chip McCormick mags uh, for 9 mil and um, they've been working pretty well for him. Um, so, but what I will tell you is if you get one of these and you are experiencing any kind of troubles, um, definitely look to your ammunition and look to your magazines. Nine times out of 10, um, nine millimeter 1911s uh, are you know, going to have little hiccups uh, with particular magazines. And really all 1911s you know, have a particular magazine they like. My Kimber, for example, loves Chip McCormick Power Plus mags. That's the only mag I run in this gun. It runs all the time. Uh, I sometimes run Wilson uh, Combat ETM mags with this, uh, but even then occasionally I'll get a, a hiccup or two. Um, but for whatever reason, this gun goes with these Chip McCormick mags. Just like this gun absolutely goes with Trip Research mags. Um, therefore, you know, after experimenting, my PM9s absolutely go with Wilson Combat ETM mags. And um, I, uh, I try them all, and uh, I love every one of those manufacturers, but let's face it, no 1911 is the same. You know, on some level, they're all kind of, you know, quirky, and uh, different uh, brand of mags go with different guns. And so it, there may be some experimentation required there to figure out uh, which one your gun likes best. Um, so I think I covered everything, uh, at least I hope I did. Um, if you have additional questions, uh, you know, certainly hit me up. And um, if you are considering a factory 1911, 
uh, in nine mil 40 or 45 or I'm sure they can hook up a 40 for you um, I personally am not a fan of 40 in, uh, in 1911s but that's just my opinion um, but I highly recommend that you check out Dan Wesson um, uh, their Valor guns are outstanding the specialist is outstanding um, I really haven't seen a 1911 they produce that I didn't uh, that I didn't fall in love with uh, but if you are thinking about competitive shooting the Point Man 9 uh, for minor USPSA uh, is the way to go, uh, in my opinion. The feature set that you get right out of the box is outstanding. The fit and finish and build quality is outstanding. Their customer service is outstanding. Um, I just can't say enough about it. The, uh, um, the stainless steel finish has held up a lot better than I, I thought it would. I, I have uh, hard chrome here and um, I've got uh, NP3 electroless nickel with Teflon on this one. You know, this has got uh, basically a, a modified blued finish. I've tried all kinds of different finishes and um, I thought that, you know, hard chrome was gonna be the ticket, but um, this stainless steel is uh, holding up great. Um, so again, you buy one of these, you throw a mag well on the bottom of it and you are ready to race. Uh, and anything else you do to it on top of that is just, you know, gravy. So uh, I hope this helped. Uh, again, uh, my name is Jarrett. Uh, if you uh, are interested in seeing some competitive videos, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, I am a uh, uh, shooter for the Blue Bullets shooting team. And if you hand load, I definitely suggest you uh, take a look at Blue Bullets. Uh, I would shoot them even if I wasn't sponsored by them. They really make a fantastic product and they've been uh, great to me over the years. And uh, on that note, I will say that the Blue Bullets 135 grain truncated cone um, are absolute laser beams coming out of these guns. I've run uh, 124, 125 grain bullets, 135s and 147s. Um, you know, the 135s are um, uh, kind of that, you know, happy medium between, you know, light impulse and, uh, and snap and uh, uh, they're super accurate and it's just uh, the way to go. Uh, of course, any you know quality ammo, these guns are going to run and they're going to shoot accurate as hell. Probably more accurate than you can be. Um, but um, uh, in any case, uh, hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you're looking for a quality factory 1911, not semi-custom, not full custom, but a factory built 1911 that is race ready, uh, I strongly suggest you check out the Dan Wesson Point Man 9. Thanks a lot.